it's uncanny how much you guys resemble a rival. I don't know, were you sharing research? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one could rent a streetlight during that production. You had everyone in town, didn't you? <laughs> so the same drill, uh, your journeys uh, to get to the, into this profession? I, from high school and college, I kind of had a mixture of things in my background of study that came together and were really useful once I found film. But it was a little bit of, I think in, in high school it was mostly art history and same into college and theater and fine arts, photography, and then in college I added maybe architectural drawing and architectural history. And after school, went more into, I didn't go for a further degree, so I didn't continue anything into art history, but uh, went into gallery work and design companies where we met, and I followed David out here from the East Coast, and we started out in small sort of PBS, American Playhouse type films, and I was, would start out with the smallest jobs, not necessarily PA, but promo, and eventually onto films that didn't really have a decorating position, but then would earn that title. And then, then from then on, was working in film. Mm -hmm. No zoology while you No were, zoology. You know, I know. It works what for this business. <laughs> David. Yeah, um, I was lucky to be brought up uh, with two artists for parents, and uh, my dad is an abstract expressionist painter, uh, theater set designer, uh, kind of a renaissance man, and he brought up me and my two brothers to all be artists. And uh, so I don't have a formal training. Um, he was also, uh, <clears throat> he taught art in uh, Bennington, Vermont, which... Uh, uh, where I went to high school, and at that time, uh, Bennington has a pretty great liberal arts college. I didn't go to Bennington, but anything that was happening at the college, I kind of sat in on. So I kind of unofficially went to Bennington College, and, uh, but uh, they'll deny it's it. It's called right? auditing. Yeah, yeah. Audit. yeah. Uh, but uh, similar to, to Jess, uh, did the theater in high school and uh, had a great uh, uh, film class there and uh, made Super 8 movies and always wanted to get into, get into movie making. But uh, I, I did the jump where I just moved to the West Coast and I started to uh, take projects that were uh, low, low, low or no paying production design or art direction projects on small uh, movies. So I kind of started, jumped right in doing production design. <clears throat> and I've been pretty much managing uh, one or two a year for forever. Uh, we worked independently when um, Sandy uh, joined me on the West Coast, and Sandy uh, decorated a few pretty great movies on her own, uh, Curtis Hansen's uh, Hand That Rocked the Cradle, uh, a couple of other great things. But then we decided that uh, we would function best working together, so we work as a team together, and uh, it's almost like having two production designers. I, I give a lot of voice to the decorating department, and I think it's a very important uh, part of making movies, whether it's a $300 million movie or a $5 million movie, it's, it's critical. So that's- We, we love hearing, hearing yeah. that. <laughs> Um, what, what I was struck by watching the film, I mean, it was, I was taken with it as everyone else was, but, um, and I was mentioning this the other night, when I am judging films for Oscar for design, I watch, I, I take in the movie and then I watch them again without the sound, which was a, a strange thing to do for a musical, but, um, but I was trying to figure out the color scheme. I have, we have to talk about color because the color to me in this movie was almost a character of itself. And I was trying to figure out your transitions and I could see, you know, there were times that you went from red to blue, but you would sort of telegraph it with a little something that was already blue and then you would transition. But I, I couldn't figure out the pattern because I didn't have enough time to <laughs> really watch it. But it was just so striking. Uh, if you can talk a little bit about 
how you developed all of that? Well, the the director had um, had a lot of movies in mind that had, and he had us look at the Jacques Demy movies, Umbrellas of Schoburg, uh, and of course all of the the classic Hollywood musicals. And uh, he um, he really uh, used the Demi movies as our kind of Bible, if you want to say that. Uh, and they were very colorful. They were primary colored uh, worlds that used practical locations for the most part, but the designer would go in and paint uh, an entire facade of a street a color, and then he would add like a color of a fire hydrant. And so he, that, we, we took the same approach. We thought this will be a great uh, way to showcase the city of Los Angeles, but we will control it with color. Uh, he 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 uh, he he did want to open up with the Mia apartment. He, he he specifically had the two worlds, the Mia world, and then the Sebastian world. He wanted them to contrast. He wanted Sebastian's to be very kind of black and white and kind of boring valley uh, apartment uh, in contrast to Mia's Hollywood apartment, which would be very bright and colorful. Did you want to add anything? Well, you you probably couldn't find a rhyme or reason because we didn't really plan one. <laughs> we had a we, we did sit down, we were really lucky, the first weeks we were on, and this was only about seven, eight weeks out, but we sat down with Linus, the DP, and uh, Mary Zoffries, the costume designer, and Damien went through the entire script. So, and it was less a color chart, or that, although that came up, especially when he was talking about the costumes in the Mia apartment, but it was all a discussion of tempo and the progression between the scenes with the musical numbers. Mm -hmm. So it was not only the, the music tempo, but also the emotional tempo. So we, uh, where colors and patterns maybe became a little more frenetic, it was a lot more energy, it was a lot more um, maybe of the love story, and then the colors dimmed or paled when we got more into the fall and winter, the black box and into Arizona, and the couple's breakup, and then it came up again. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then the, the blues and the reds, there, there was a, Damien was in love, he, he did mention California colors and it was so important about California to him. And it was the blue, blue sapphire skies that the skies never got black, that it was always this gorgeous blue. And he was, he loved the purple of the jacarandas and the red of the bougainvilleas. So all those colors in his talking about them, we knew they were important. Well, we, re we referenced a lot of California painters, uh, uh, Patsy Valdez, uh, David Hockney, and they all kind of fit into this Jacques Demy world of, of bright uh, primary colors. And uh, uh, we kind of shot the Mia apartment up first and, uh, the director was v very proactive with the art department. He actually asked for a desk in the art department, so he was with us yeah. all the time. <laughs> what a lovely uh, idea. Well, he, it was great. It was wonderful. But when we did the um, Mia apartment, the producers were like, whoa, this is quite... Uh, you know, right, wrong. <laughs> so, so, and how? But the director was like, "Yes, this is what we want." This is so we were doing it for him, and he was. And, and actually, we had we had wonderful pro producers that were protecting him as well, and protecting. We were doing it for him, and he he was very much involved with every step of the way, determining the colors and determining what, what we were trying to to do. I mean, we were doing this for him. He had this movie in his, uh, it's similar to the arrival director's uh, uh, process in a sense that he had this script prior to Whiplash, so it was in his mind for a long time and um, just waited for the right opportunity and money to, to, uh, to go ahead with it. I kept seeing a lot of sort of red grooms and uh, Cindy Sherman in composition and in the colors and stuff too. Yes. I mean, being a native of Los Angeles, uh, I, uh, I, I knew or I've shot at almost all your locations, <laughs> but you showed them so well. Uh, uh, but the, you were talking about transitions. The transitions in this movie are really tight. There's never a moment delay. It's just really mechanically, uh, creatively perfect the well, way it it's, it's goes from moment to moment and the way you guys sort of just help keep it seamless. Yeah, it, it, it is truly 
was an opportunity for us to work with, uh, first of all, we had a fantastic art department. Uh, and there was great communication between all the departments. The camera uh, department was involved with us and Mary Zolfries, the costume designer. We were all sitting around a table from early on talking about what we were doing. So there, everybody was making the same movie. And the editor also, who had worked with Damien on Whiplash, was very much uh, with us the whole, the whole time. So we were all making this director's movie. And uh, what happens is it, it shows, it comes out to be, as opposed to these disjointed departments that are maybe talented craftspeople, but they're all do, kind of doing their own different right. thing. Yeah. I can't tell you how pleased I was to see you using so much painted backings. <laughs> well, we we did uh, we did uh, like Jess. We we had some wonderful uh, original. All all pretty much most of the paintings were uh, in the epilogue. They were all original uh, paintings that also J C Backings did for us. Great company, but he also in in embracing and using the city. Uh, there were existing murals throughout sure. the city that yeah. Damien specifically wanted us to use, but then we created many of the murals that uh, appeared in the background uh, that also JC Backings did for us. So um, that became kind of a, a thread theme sure. through, through the movie. And then when you cross over into fantasy, you're channeling American in Paris and yep. all those sort of great moments, those montages. But he wanted, the, the, he, did, he, didn't, he wanted the city to be viewed in kind of an off-kilter way mm -hmm. uh, and, and to really be filming the city, but he wanted to embrace sort of the incongruous juxtaposition of how the architecture is in the city where you will have uh, a historic garden court apartment sitting next to a brutalist bank next to a Frank Geary, and that's how the city went, and, but sure. that's how he wanted right. the movie to unfold, and he wanted to e embrace that. So uh, everyone, especially those of us who live here, the, the opening scene with the freeway. It, uh, it, uh, Are you going to ask? I'm going to ask. Oh, is that it? No, 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 no. I just well, uh, <laughs> I, it's it's obviously designed because the colors of the cars and the costumes and all of that. Not only the shutdown of the freeway, but um, which happens all the time. Which, <laughs> <laughs> Don't but, need a movie for that. <laughs> but the choreography and the planning and the I just can't even imagine what an undertaking uh, that was. Every every set was designed and everything was planned and everything was rehearsed. Uh, and what drove a lot of the sets, or most all the sets where there was dancing, was Mandy Moore, the choreographer, who was also at that same table with us in the art department. So we were all planning things. We also had um, a work environment where we had warehouses and offices, uh, office on San Fernando Road in um, Atwater, where everything was all in one area, our construction department, our paint department, our prop department, uh, but, and we had space in, uh, where we can be rehearsing. So for instance, the epilogue and the um, freeway dance were able to be rehearsed out uh, uh, on, uh, uh, in a parking lot where we parked all of the cars in an arc. Uh, and they were able to rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. And then also, uh, in picking that uh, freeway, we had three three options for the freeway, the two of which were on level ground, and then we had this raised elevated uh, transition ramp from the 105 to the 110, and the director really liked that because you could see the city in the background. We, um, we were able to uh, recreate that arc and have all of the cars uh, parked so that because we had a window of time where we were only able to go up and shoot that dance sequence over a weekend, two days. Um, so uh, my concerns were, again, were safety because it was 100 feet in the air. There was a very low, low parapet wall that the actors could easily just back up to and just fall off. Nobody got hurt. But it was uh, no, no actors it was were a, harmed it, in the making of this movie. But it, it was also one of the this super clear days where you can see the city in the background. The director really liked that, uh, kind of like the Oz 
City of Oz in the background. And um, uh, it was also super hot. It was like 108 degrees. Nobody, nobody uh, had heat prostration, and it, it all worked. But it was a, it was a th it looked like a continuous crane shot, but it was actually three, uh, th three transitions from crane to steady cam to crane, and um, but uh, that's again the cameraman, and he was. Uh, I will also say that in scouting with the director and the cameraman. Uh, they virtually shot the whole movie on, Linus had an iPad and Damien had his iPhone. And he would say, Sandy and David, stand over there and just walk this way like Mia and Sebastian. So we would do that. They would film the whole, they, so everything was rehearsed from early on picking a location. Um, and um, that it helped, it was, do, it sure. was doing storyboards. So when are we going to see this making of the movie with you two? Isn't yeah. That funny? I love that. <laughs> no, I, I kept just sort of being a practical person, thinking about on the freeway when they went to let's do take two, and you think of all these it, hoods it and roofs that have been collapsed by mm -hmm. dancing and all, all the paint that's been scraped away, and you're mm -hmm. madly trying to restore. They're it. really good dancers, and they they dance you know, lightly. They, they, yeah. So. <laughs> but but uh, safety is a bit in, in what we do. It uh, you know I I hate to fold that into the design yeah, of the movie, but it's all everything. part of what we have to do. It's, a, it's something that, um, you know, we've, uh, we've done fire sets where, you know, you have to incorporate that into designing what, what we design. Being a, a child of the city and many, many field trips to the planetarium, mm. I don't recall the planetarium being a place that you could do cabling and fly people in the dome. Did you have to build that as a set? Well, that 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 was uh, it was a tricky location to get. It, yeah, it sure. also uh, is one of our favorite locations. We 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 love Los Angeles, and we we take pride in um, as a hobby in between movies we go. Uh, on architectural sojourns, sojourns and look for uh, different uh, uh, buildings and we go, uh, it's just something that we love to do. But the, the planetarium is a, a, a favorite place that uh, before we were married, we would go um, watch sunset from the roof. And the building has been closed for about six years with a, with a um, uh, full restoration. Uh, where they kept pretty much everything intact. It's a great building, but they did change the planetarium, and uh, they did eventually let us come in to film the dance sequence in the foyer, and uh, so we did not build that. That was that was uh, the practical location, and then we mimicked the drive up from Rebel without a cause. But they did shoot scenes from Rebel in the planetarium. And what we l saw was they modernized the planetarium. So although the front of the building is all original and deco, uh, we lost that in the planetarium. And then we also had to make the actors float, and that was wire work. So that could not that could not occur in the in the practical location. So we built that same size as the real uh, planetarium and. We did manage to find uh, a uh, proper um, projector oh that then the set uh, kind of unfolded around. There were three variations that um, uh, we, we did set design of three different deco variations and we showed the director. So we kind of heightened and brought it back to deco, but construction department built fantastic uh, doorway. It's a dead match for the, the real place, but that was a set. And it gave Dancing with the Stars a whole new meaning. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. Thank you so much. Can we uh, set up passengers, please?